Bryce, I thought I would show off my cool socks for no reason other than I was just crossing my legs and saw them. So, uh, hello everyone. It's uh, September and it's still hot as shit outside. Not uh, not happy about that, but you know, it's too hot. It's too damn hot. Too I tell you. Right. Hello, Bryce. Hey, you mind can over. Uh, uh, you want to give me a little? Give me a little space, please. I'll give you a little more. Give me a little space. I'll get. Uh, will you just? <laughs> Hi, Brett. Hello. <laughs> I uh, I read an article this past week, the other day. Okay. And so I use a I use an RSS reader. Oh, okay. I still I'm I'm back on my ever since Twitter went away. I'm back on my RSS shit. I need to do that. News blur is my recommendation. News blur. It is. Not perfect. Okay. You know, it is a service. That service popped up when Google Reader disappeared, mm -hmm. and it has been dutifully running ever since. Oh, nice. So when I stopped using it, uh, probably a couple of years after it started, uh, when I came back to it last year, uh, still works. Yeah, it's still like... working. <laughs> and uh, so, so in it, it's uh, it's got all these. You can like tag stuff and save stuff. So I like save stories in there, and I'll you know bring them to the show or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I read an article that actually got me mad. Uh oh! It, it got me so mad that I created a new tag in uh, uh, in my thing. So you can like see like I got different tags. You know, I got you know, AI and sure, funny. creator, funny, neat. But mad. I, I'm gonna click on mad because this got me so fucking mad. Oh, the the uh, I'm and I'm not I'm not a I'm sorry I'm not a I'm I'm not a like I I think I I don't have anything against journalists and okay. I don't have anything against video game journalists. This is not that sure. But I'm gonna read you a, the headline from Eurogamer. Okay, staying up and binging Starfield literally saved this player's life. Binging and literally saved being in air quotes. Uh, mm. Mm. What do you before I before I go into this 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 angering story? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Binging Starfield literally saved that player's life. Uh, there's there's obviously some sarcasm that's going on there that I I definitely read into it. It's like okay binging you know save this guy's <laughs> life okay okay uh, 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 it makes me think that the guy is gonna like maybe something serious happened in the, it and but they're wanting to place it on starfield mm. doing what have i told you the headline is not sarcastic at all then now it's weird. It's fucking weird, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to continue. This is from Eurogamer. Thank you, Vicky Blake, for writing this. And I'm sorry, Vicky Blake, because I knew you, I know you write a lot of stuff for Eurogamer. <clears throat> and this reads. This is based off of a Reddit post. Okay. User Tidy C Killer uh, posted on Starfield subreddit that uh, if they hadn't been this is this is the quote from Eurogamer. If they hadn't been awake, quote, binging, end quote, the game when the fire broke out. The player and their wife would have, would likely have quote died to smoke inhalation. Sure. All right, checking in on on how Brett's thermometer of the story is so far. Um, like they couldn't have just been asleep and then the smoke would have woke them up. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Are they that heavy of sleepers to where that would be an issue? A quote from the Reddit post. At 2.26 in the morning while playing the game, I heard an explosion from my downstairs neighbor's apartment. They added, I paused my game to see what was happening. When I opened the door, I saw flames rising up our stairwell to our apartment. And so the short version is because he was uh, because this person was awake at what? Fucking 2.30 a.m. Sure. Um, they heard the muffled sound of an explosion more than a floor away from them. Okay. More than a story away from them. And because that person was awake and it wasn't loud enough to have shooken someone who was asleep. Sure. Him being, this person being awake and uh, being... Able to react quicker. Yeah, able to react to a stimulus that a fire alarm wouldn't have caught. A smoke detector wouldn't have caught that immediately, right? right. You right. It does need to have smoke. For, um. But, but, and so at the end of the day, people, you know, their lives, these lives were saved. I'm sure there was some amount of, but look, 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 man, 
Staying up and binging Starfield literally saved this player's life. No, it... I I would like to argue that no, it did not. Right. Just be because you know just being up saved his life, not playing the game. Right. If he was up at two thirty doing what the rest of us are doing at two thirty, which is jacking off, <laughs> he would have had the same exact or thing. Fucking. They or could fucking. Be fucking. It's two thirty a.m. Yeah, it's late for that. Oh, okay, that's true. But the only difference between that and the Starfield thing is the the publication. Right. Right. If he was if he was up, they're trying to make it re relevant. Right. Or, uh. or really, what it is is they're going after Reddit. They've they they saw this interesting topic on reddit and now social media becomes news i don't like that so much I, it There's made me so, so many mad. so many times that i read through stuff you know uh and and mm. it's all just links to something that somebody else wrote sure and you're like well what? and that's i mean lazy it's lazy i i'll say this because because in especially in the blogging game Especially where, you know, you think of your Gizmodos and Kotakus and stuff. They have a post quota in a lot of those cases. Sometimes they are forced to write so many articles. Right. And I even think that there's a place for that. Though, I will say, the very funniest thing is the more obvious freebooting. Like, uh, there's a site that I will pull news stories from occasionally. It is not a particularly reputable site. But it does have science in the name. So that's good <laughs> enough. Uh, sci it's Science Alert. If, if fucking I link to it all the time. And we okay. Think so. But uh, uh, Science Alert is fascinating because it's just, it is almost entirely articles lifted from other places. And so a lot of times you'll see it at the bottom of the article. Like this was originally published in mm -hmm. Business Insider. And you click in and it goes to it. Or, you know, this a version of this was published last year with okay. old information. And so at least they're upfront about it. Um, but I think that there is there are worse things than like regurgitating one blog post for another blog post. Yeah. And I and I think that this example, the Starfield Reddit thing is worse than the other than those two examples and those those hypotheticals. I mean it 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 I don't uh, A, I question the newsworthiness of it to begin with. Right. I question the, a, a, and B, like nothing it's not like there was something proprietary about Starfield. It's not like this guy was like, oh my god, the aliens are coming and I need and I use my constellation powers to diplomacy with them. And like, nah, man, you just you heard a, a, some, an I explosion. <laughs> and then looked. I mean it it would it, it, it would be it, mm, I'm, I'm now I'm moving the goalpost. I'm, I'm starting to move the goalpost. Sorry, that's me. <laughs> if if he had jumped into action immediately, mm -hmm. not just I heard a thing and I went out and I looked and I picked my hat and I oh and then I saw the fire. So I was uh, you know okay, but I think that's different than like hearing an explosion and going we got to go now. There's right. no investigation. There's something super super serious. Right. Like. I don't, I, I'm, mm, I don't, I'm not advocating that they should have died. <laughs> I'm not, but, but I'm not, I'm still at the point where I'm looking at it going. So it did it. It didn't have to be Starfield. I mean, if they were playing tears of the kingdom, the same yeah. thing would have happened. Yeah. If they were, you know, doing Baldur's gate three, they it, would probably, if it even happened, I mean, I'm not fooled. I'm, and I'm not fooled. Wow. Uh, the Because this is really just a Reddit post. Right. You know, uh, like I've been catching myself by calling the poster heat because I'm pretty sure it's, they don't say in the post. Oh. Okay. Um, but it's, it's, it's but, but you, you just, I don't know. It's fucking Reddit. There's a solid chance this isn't even real. I mean, right. they have a, po you know, they have a photo of a, of a, of a, fi of a fire. Of something I don't know. Yeah, I'm not fooled. Not fooled. I'm not fooled. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> not fooled. I did try to get fooled. I I almost they tried to fool me. Okay. They did try Wait, to fool me today. So different people. There's a difference between I was almost fooled and I got you know like I like one is intent that maybe you wanted to be fooled. Oh. And then the and the okay. other one is that accidentally happens. So which was it? Was it you going out to get fooled? You, it was like 
I want to get fooled. Good, dis- good distinction. No, th- they tried to fool me. Uh, they tried to come like, and fool me. Eh, 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 so, small amount of background. The apartment that I live in, mm-hmm. I don't have a laundry machine in there. Okay, but there's a there's a building where they got them. Sure. I go over there and do it. Um, and I've never had a I've never had a washer dryer because I've been in this apartment forever before they started offering it, and then I don't want to fucking pay. I don't want to. I, if I'm going to rent to own a laundry machine, it's definitely not going to be through my apartment where I never, right. ever own it. Right. And so... You're uh, fine with walking over there and doing the thing. Yeah, That's absolutely. Fine. And I get a knock on my door today. Maintenance. Uh, and I'm confused. And, and I'm, I'm confused. Housekeeping. <laughs> I, I'm confused because like I didn't have anything. It's not and like you I need, had, you didn't have anything outstanding, right? And or, or if there's an expe- inspections, usually they usually they over inundate us with a with heads up that inspections are happening, right? And then most of the time, I'm either not there or they miss it and they don't care anyway, right? So the uh, and it's not it's not a free laundromat. Nick with a C's got a good question. It, it is yeah. you you can use a quarters or an app. Oh, or an app. They got an app. They've got the Bluetooth. Oh, and this fucking app. It's just is it what? Shit? So, see, okay. Just so I'm gonna come back to this, but the app, the that you know, it's the the whole thing is it's like, hey, here's the digital wallet so that you can pay for your laundry without doing payment processing fees, whatever. Right. But with an app like that, you've got to have like a vig. You got to have like a. And you gotta have like another way of funneling people, right? You've got all these users. How are you gonna get them? How right. are you really gonna some, get them? Some ads, maybe. Not ads. At first, there was a marketplace. Oh, hey, you know, list stuff. Hey, are you selling stuff? I don't know. List okay. stuff. Okay. No one fucking uses no. that. No one fucking uses that. So now what it is, I can't even, I couldn't, I still can't believe they can do this. You could buy fucking lottery tickets. You can fucking gamble on through the this app through the app. Let me so it's like, hey, you got a little bit extra change there. Yeah. Why like, don't you? Why don't you go ahead and? Okay, so it's so it's not going to find any laundry machines because I'm no, here. You're too far. Um, but uh, look, win big for free for, for free. Like official lottery in the app. You just <laughs> oh, I, I guess it has to have my location for that. Okay. But like, that's fucked. Yeah. That seems fucked. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, too much. Mm. Too oh, much. so so maintenance. Yes. And uh, uh, I'm like, hey, what's up, guys? Um, I was like, oh, we got the uh, uh, we got your new uh, laundry unit. We got your new washer and dryer here. And and I make that exact same face. I go, oh, uh, uh, what? No, no, yeah, I know. I don't. I don't have laundry because I know. I know. That if they put those washing machines in my... They're going to charge you. That's right. They are going to do everything in their power to raise my rent. I've been in this apartment for a long time. Mm-hmm. And by virtue of that, my rent is very decent for where I am at the at this moment. Okay. But I know that they will and try the to charge... exact address is... And it's 123 <laughs> Fake Street. <laughs> and and I know that if, if... Because I've looked. If you go and rent a similar unit at this place now... Because they standardize having a washer and dryer, it's like four or five hundred dollars more a month. Wow! Yeah, significant, significant, and also because I've been there a long time, and so there. Right. I mean, there's a lot of reasons there's a delta, but there's a large delta there, and I don't want to fucking change that just to, so I can have a washer and dryer in my thing. And so I'm like talking to this. I have to. I have to tell this guy because this guy doesn't know what's going on. Right. He's like, he's, he's just, just the guy, guy. This guy moving the moving the machine. Yeah, and like I don't. This is this has like this is probably a mistake. And he's like showing me some text message he's got, and I see it. The number's there, but also, mm, also my number, which I'm not going to give out, is one that you could make a mistake writing or inputting. Just, it's just you, yeah. you, just because of the way that it is, you could make mistakes. Okay, on it happens a lot. I get sure. the wrong mail sometimes. Shit gets delivered to the wrong place. Um. And so I'm like having this conversation with this guy because this guy, you know, he's like the maintenance. He's a maintenance guy. He's not like the leasing folks. It's not like I can. Somebody told him to go do a thing and he's just trying to do the thing. Exactly. Yeah. Um, And so like me completely not woken up at all, by the way, I'm wearing like 
a white thin Hanes t-shirt and fucking like a shiny workout pants and stuff. And it's still my glasses on too. Yeah. Um, I'm like, I don't, I don't have laundry. I don't want these. They're going to charge me for them. If I take them, please, this is not for me. Yeah. And so he, the guy walks, he's like, okay, okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll talk. I'll tell him. And, and I hadn't heard back and I didn't, I still haven't heard back. I haven't heard or seen anything. They moved the machines. I had seen them in the in the parking lot, and they moved them. So it seemed like they found where they were going. But but now it makes me think: like, are they re? Because if I wasn't home, right, they would have gone in and, and suddenly and, this, and put them there. This thing would be there, and then it would have been to get it out of your house. You go, no, no, yeah. I don't want this. It's like well, it's already guys, there. I I didn't you. Yeah. So I'm getting this I'm, for free? No no change in rent? Oh, hell no. And you know they would have fucked me on that. Yeah. You know they would have fucked me on yeah. that. You know? Oh, well, it's already there, and the next lease will just do it. Like, I, I know they would fucking have done it. And if I wasn't home, my place wouldn't have been deadbolted. Right. And so they would have gone in and do it. And then that would have been its own, own whole other thing. Because I have a like a, cl- like a little closet for uh, uh, the hookups, right? There's right. hookups for it. But I got shit there. I have storage stuff mm-hmm. there. I have trash there. They would have just, they would have just dug all that shit out. I uh, something left it on the floor. I I guess so. I maybe. I don't know. I I don't know. But I am yeah. I am I am. Uh, it, they're trying to get me, and I am not <laughs> fooled. And I am so smart. And I am not paying money like that for a laundry unit you know, I would never own. You're like, I know what you guys are trying to do. I know. And I'm nice try. Yeah. They actually yes, I'm I'm positive that is the case. Like they they so fucking want me out of this unit mm. because there's no laundry. There are fucking no upgrades at all. I got yeah. the white appliances dog. I'm yeah. living my best <laughs> humble life. <laughs> I mean, you can always say, how do we turn this into something that benefits me instead of you guys getting more money? Let's like, no, you don't want to. Well then fine. Leave it the way it is. <sighs> you know, they're trying a lot of, they're trying a lot of sneaky bullshit. The, the sleazy mm. uh, example. Okay. This is uh, so like they have uh, garages. You can get an enclosed closed garage with a door and all. Um, they sent out some email like a month or two ago saying like, uh, if you have this certain type of unit where you normally just get your garage, if you have like an attached garage as part of your lease, mm-hmm. um, you're gonna have to start paying for that immediately, or like in the next few months or whatever. It's like. You're just gonna uh, you're gonna laterally change everyone's fucking contracts like that. Right. You're, this is like like. I'm sorry, I didn't sign any contract saying that that can happen. Well, I'm sure they'll say, oh, actually you well, did. Well, it's right here. Actually, you did. Yeah, it's yeah. fucked. It's fucked. It's fucked. It's yep. fucked. Yep. Sorry, it's fucked. The land landlord landlording is fucked. It's mm-hmm. fucked. It's fucked. Sorry, I'm, it's fucked. Brett. Yes. Did something not fucked happen to you? Yes. What's going on? Well. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Brad, how was your weekend? It was a great weekend. What'd you do? I, uh, it was my uh, EK and I's 18th wedding anniversary. Oh my gosh, congratulations. Yeah. Uh, uh, your marriage is finally legal. Yes, that's right. <laughs> you can have... I, people had, a, they had a, a countdown clock mm-hmm, mm-hmm. for when our wedding or when our uh, uh, marriage When your marriage was is legal. Adult. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so, uh, did you guys do anything fun for it? Yes, we did. Do you normally do things for anniversaries? Uh, yeah, usually just like I mean, like a nice dinner or yeah, okay. always usually a nice dinner. Either I cook it or mm. or we go to a thing. Yeah. Uh, we well last year we were in San Antonio for the convention there. Oh, okay. And uh, did some stuff. Uh, and had a nice dinner with my sister and brother in law, mm-hmm. and that was a good time. This year. Uh, we went to a restaurant called Emmer and Rye. Emmer and Rye. And Rye. It, it, it is a fancy restaurant. Emmer and Rye. But it's not. It a sounds fancy, like a British. It sounds like a British. It's it's a fancy restaurant, uh, uh, but not snotty fancy restaurant. It is okay. These people are really passionate about their food. They have very exacting standards, so you get this amazing stuff. Mm-hmm. But everybody's really cool. Okay. Okay. So, so it's that kind of fancy restaurant. Sure. What type of cuisine are we talking about? American. Uh, uh, American. It's actually hyper local. 
Oh, uh, wow. Okay. So they make everything from stuff in the area. Okay, so, wow. Like there was a zucchini with a uh, some kind of vinegar and purslane. Purslane is this is. this is kind of spongy uh, vegetable uh, that grows wild in your yard. Oh, okay. Here in Austin, in Aust- and so they did that, and uh, like all these uh, uh, amazing dishes that really. But the most amazing thing that they make is sourdough bread. Ah, uh, the rye. Like rye. they mm-hmm. take like we went. So our twelfth anniversary, mm-hmm. we went there. And I thought that it was going to be, I'm like, how dedicated are they to hyper local? Oh, uh-huh. and so I, the chef came to our table. We sat at the chef's table yeah. and I challenged him. He's like, yes, we make sourdough bread. I'm like, really? Where'd you get the uh, spores mm, for the yeast? The yeast, yeah. For the, and he goes, well, funny you should say that. We took a bit of starter. We put it in a backpack and we walked the green <laughs> That's great. <laughs> and gathered spores from that, and from that we make the sourdough starter. Can you do that? That yes. works. What the yes. fuck? Uh, I don't. I don't know that I need bread that is like been backpacking. Right. But wow. But yeah, that. Okay. Ser- and it was. And could you, I mean? Did you? Yes. You could. You, you can taste, taste it. it. Yeah. You could taste it. It. There was a taste of Austin. <laughs> what is what is the taste profile of Austin? Uh, a, a little bit of the a little um, spicy, little spicy. Uh, yeah. uh, well, like for me, the spicy. main thing that I was, I, <laughs> <laughs> what I kept tasting in it was kind of the, uh, and it might be just my imagination, but I could taste the the um, cedar. You know the mm. the the cedar from the, the cedar area. trees, the local trees. Yeah, yeah. it 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 kind of has that flavor. But I mean, mm. this is like the best sourdough bread you could possibly have because soft on the inside, the spongy that you mm-hmm. pull. The outside has got just the crispy okay. enough to where you know it crackles. Okay, and they they keep it you know baked every day. Yeah, and then they put it in the the um, the um, oven. The, 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 the heat lamp kind of thing, okay, but yeah. it's more than that. Yeah, yeah, the plancha, I think, is what it's uh, called, uh, to where it gets heated up to where it's perfectly toasted. They bring it to your uh, table, wow. and it's got whipped butter and crushed pecans, mm-hmm. like like almost like a meal. Now, how long is your marriage to this bread? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, well, I mean, at least six years. At least six years, yeah. Yeah, like, at least wow. six years. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, we were enjoying all of that. And they made, they had special things because we were, they're like happy anniversary. And oh, uh-huh. we got to do the whole thing. And uh, and earlier that day, we went and saw Blue Beetle. Oh, yeah, at, the movie. Uh, yeah, and which was really fun. Really? Like, oh, for good. a DC movie? Yeah, right. Uh, very impressed. I've heard that. I've very heard impressed. That. Okay. So, um and we, you know, it's got a, a whole list of great actors mm. in it. And so we were, you know, talking about it at dinner. And as we're sitting there, this guy walks by with his sister and sits at the table next to us. And I'm looking, I'm like, is that Harvey G- uh Harvey Guillen? Yeah, is that what? Harvey Guillen from What We Do in the Shadows? Yeah, he's And he was Gizmo. in Blue Beetle. Oh. And I'm like, no. And when I looked, I'm like... That's Harvey Guillen right <gasps> there. Like, next table. Oh, my God. To us. And so he's like, well, that's cool. Yeah. And I go, I'm going to go talk to him. I was going to say, what do you do? Because meaning being around, like, public people yes. is an art. Yes. Like, I've bumped into this a lot mm-hmm. through, like, through Brian and through mm-hmm. all his magic buddies. So I get it. When you yeah. when like, hey, you, sometimes you're just going to need, like, be cool. The best thing you can do is fucking do nothing. Right. Like just sit there and, and, and bask in the moment and not try to make a memento out of it. Right. And I, because I have my low level fame mm. of being at conventions and doing all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. I know what I like when someone approaches me, especially if I'm out in the wild mm. and someone approaches me there you know, one they just make sure are you blah blah blah. Uh-huh. And can I can can we role play this actually? Sure. So I can figure out what you're thinking. <clears throat> uh, oh, excuse me, Ex- excuse me. Uh, 
are you are you the neighbor guy? Are the you neighbor the neighbor guy? guy? Aren't you the neighbor guy? From uh, what's that thing that your your friend likes? What's the thing that your friend likes? What yes, the, the neighbor thing. That's I That's, love that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> good. 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 Uh, but uh, yeah. but uh, I, I try if and when someone comes to me tells me like I've seen you or heard you and blah. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know what the turnoff for me is? I love your work. That means nothing to me oh, okay. because that tells me nothing. Like you can just say that. That's a very LA thing sure. to and, say. And like there are not. I would, as an outsider, tell me if this is wrong, but I would say like probably voice actors don't have a level of auteurship like that. Mm. Like there, are, there. I you could probably think of exceptions to the rule of people of voice actors who are known. By their name and not by their voice. Yeah. Right. Like fucking the critical role guy, I guess, would be the very first name I can think of. Mercer. Matt, yeah. Like yeah. he's he's kind of known for being Matt Mercer. Sure. And so maybe so that's where it's like understandable to be like, oh, I love your work because yeah. I I. And so I have to imagine that that is not the case for most voice acting. No, no. It, and, and for me, the more obscure the role mm -hmm. that you uh, that you tell me, the the happier I am. Mm -hmm. And I'm usually I will do that. Like when I met uh, George Lowe, oh, the, yeah. the thing that I said was, was not Space Ghost, but as the role as the dad in the Brack show. Oh, sure. And, and I was like, and aren't you the voice of mm -hmm. the the Bart? Uh, of the the, uh, the Atlanta BART system, the train system. He's like, oh, how do you know that? <laughs> I mean, like, I love to do stuff like that. So yeah. in this case, when I met Harvey, I was like, first name basis, everybody. Yeah. Well, because at first, me I and was, H. Yeah, me and H. So we're <laughs> we're kicking it, and uh, and I said, hey, uh, is it okay for me to? praise bomb you for a second mm, mm, mm. and he was like oh. uh okay i said my wife and i were just watching blue Be beetle today and we said how much we were noticing how much uh, what a great story this was yeah. and i said especially since you know with this hispanic the latino family and that unit and how they work together i, I said i it's very connected i'm cajun and i go my cajun family there's a lot of you know, uh, things that connect. Sure. Kinship. And, and I was like, I, I love that. I love the work that you did. I was like, I love the role that you played. Uh, uh, and he's like, well, thank you. And mm. we, like, we shook hands and talked for, and I'm like, uh, and I looked, I go, wait, have you had the bread yet? <laughs> and he's like, no, I'm like, you need to get the bread right now. Mm. I was like, all of, and he goes, yeah, I was supposed to, I go, can we, and the, the waiter come back and can we get him some bread? <laughs> and he just started laughing. <laughs> get him some bread. That's great. At any point, do you introduce yourself? I said, I'm a voice actor. Okay. And I said, I, I'm a voice actor. And I said, and my wife is a comic book creator. And mm. I said, so um, I, that's EK. I'm Brett. Yeah. Weaver. And I said, uh, I just want you to, I'm so glad. Oh, to you're see the you guy here. from that neighbor thing. Yeah. Aren't you, <laughs> the, the, neighbor? Neighbor? Aren't you the neighbor? You're the neighbor. No, that would have been hilarious. He's <laughs> like, aren't you on Attack on Titan? I'm like, <laughs> Wow! Yeah, then yeah. I would. So, uh, so how did he take it? Very well. He was into it. Yeah, very nice guy. It, 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 ended, up, it ended up later. His sister was there with him, mm -hmm. and uh, and so I was like, "Hello," and you know, I, that's the other thing is I don't just talk to, I talk to the person, the other one there, and sure. it's hi, I'm Brett. Oh, that's and, nice. Uh, and uh, hi, I'm Brett. I was on Attack on Titan. Yeah, Hello. and he goes, and he goes, "Well, what are y'all here for?" And I go, "Well, it's our 18th anniversary." And he's like, oh, congratulations. I go, so weird. I said, so I meet you on my 18th anniversary. And mm -hmm. I said, and on our, and I said, on my wedding uh, uh, weekend, mm -hmm. I said, the bachelor party, we went to Barton Springs and I saw Ed Bagley Jr. there. I said, so, <laughs> I said, it's all connected. What, I, a, what a tapestry you I, live. I know, it's just, what an I'm like, it's all connected, right? <laughs> it's all the same thing. <laughs> that's, that's really good. That's really good. Yeah. If someone, we've got a few people in the chat who mentioned this. If someone came up and mentioned that they recognized you from Great Night more than like any of the anime or voiceover stuff. That'd make me happy. Yeah. 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 It's, there's like, I, 
I, I'm not like used to that. Right. Like we, we haven't done a live show in the, in a minute, except for the one we just did. Yeah. Um, but, but we, we, we haven't done as many live shows in the past couple of years as we've done in years uh, past. Previously. Yeah. And, um, and I, 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 I did talk about that a little bit, uh, uh, a, week, a week or two ago about it's not knowing how to accept like compliments yeah. and stuff. And at the live shows, the live shows I always like have very good reasons to like talk and then I gotta, I gotta go. go. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know, I gotta do do this. Yeah. Like it's um, because that. I mean, even that, it took some time to like get sociable enough to say like, hey, you know, uh, okay, yeah. now, but I gotta go. But hey, good. Like it even t- takes a while to get to that point. Um, I mean, just yeah. be grateful. Try to be present right in that moment. Yeah. yeah. And then when you know you gotta go, you just because. Mm. <sighs> It's it's a little bit like as many conventions as I've been to, and always the first question is, how do you get your start in voice acting, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It took me a I while. I wish I could do what you do. It took me a while to realize that all of those people who are asking that, for them, that's the first time they're asking it. So it may annoy the shit out of me because mm-hmm. it's like, really, come on. I got this so much. But hot. Yeah. that's the first time they're asking it, so I can't hold that yeah. on them. And, and it's a very like base like thought. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, I would like to try that. And it's not a thought that you necessarily need to have a ton of commitment to have. Uh, but you're like, hey, I don't know. I would like to try to do that. And then you've got someone like like I, so I, yeah, I agree with you. Like, you, there's, it. You don't want to poo poo someone's right very first thought because then you just come across as an asshole. I've I've only been an asshole <laughs> a couple of times because there was this little young, you know, like nineteen year old young lady who was uh, at. This is one of my jobs, and I was the IT guy, and her. Her mother was the uh, SVP. Oh. Uh, was an SVP. Mm-hmm. And what I, was she in uh, uh, a high responsibility role or low responsibility role? Uh, the 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 nineteen year old girl. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, she was just coming into work for the summer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and maybe she was heading uh, to college, and she said, uh, she said, uh, you know, I'm going to go be a lawyer. I'm like, oh, well, that's great. She goes, but you know, I could be a voice actor. You know, I could. I think I'll do that. I could do that. And I say, well, no, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> End of conversation. And she said, what? <laughs> well, of course I have to. I go, oh, I'm sorry. Wait, have you ever acted on stage ever before? And she said, no. And I go, well, then no, you can't. <laughs> and I go, oh, wait a minute. That's not true. You could be a shitty voice actor. I was oh. like, that's, that's possible. Oh. And... Ooh. and <laughs> And she was like, I could be, I mean, and she's beautiful and I'm sure she could do the thing, but she, you was, know, the thing voice actors need yes. is beauty. Yeah. So she moves on and I made, I did a beeline to the S because I was like, I know this is going to get back to her. So, <laughs> so I went and I said, like, Hey, I talked to your daughter today. And she's like, yeah, and I told her what happened. She goes, good. She needed to be taken down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Probably. Like yeah. I wasn't there, but I'm gonna back your play on that one because just statistically. Wow. The see, I get I get the opposite inclination, or uh, I get the other side of the coin, which is I <laughs> I end up I don't mean to do this, but I definitely will like act accidentally try to talk people out of becoming creators like uh uh i i realized i was doing this uh at at, so was it there was for some reason uh debbie scottis one who is in our chat uh was uh was out here and and um and, and it was great it was awesome seeing willie and uh and he was like you know i want to get I want to do some more video stuff, online mm-hmm. stuff, you know, like, oh man, like, what, like coming out to Austin or uh, all these sorts of sorts of things. And 
it was probably like 10 or 15 minutes into the drive because I'm we're just talking as I'm, as I'm giving him a ride. And we're like, oh, I'm just like shitting on Austin. I'm like kind of shitting on Austin just to make sure he really wants this. Yeah. Um, Because Austin is expensive. expensive. It's yeah. really fucking expensive. It is a big trek. Like it's a cool, this is a cool city and you're kind of not close to to any other cities you're like stuck in the middle of that like there's all there's a million great reasons right um and i felt bad doing it but i having heard your story of telling the you know the 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 uh the the the, the gal at work yeah uh like you know what like sometimes the reality is fine but bedside manner also matters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm not always good at. And I'm not always good at, you know. Um, well, and, you know. and one of the things that I did was I created, I started doing at conventions, mm -hmm. uh, creating a, not a dub your own, but hey, let's do character. We'll do character development. I've got a script. We won't do dubbing, but we'll just record something. Hmm. And we'll do a thing and you get to give it a try because all these people that go, I can do it. I'm like, cool, here's the script. This is the character you're playing. You've got five minutes to figure out what you're going to do with it. Yeah. And we're going to get started. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. there's the microphone. We're going to record it. And by the end of the weekend, I'm going to have something edited together. Wow. And uh, of those ones that would happen, I'd probably have 10 people mm -hmm. that would come up and two would be good. Mm -hmm. Eight were absolute horseshit <laughs> how do you okay this is a great one because i don't how do you <laughs> i'm being told i'm an excellent rad giver and a bad doctor yeah Thank horrible you. doctor <laughs> uh how do you uh give bad how do you give <laughs> constructive criticism how do you tell how do you give someone only bad news like that like what because i can't imagine in that moment you want to be like Boom! You fucking suck! Yeah. I told you! Like, obviously, you probably don't want to do that for most of those ten people. No. But how do you how do you go about and say, okay, well, you don't have timber here, and you actually aren't, like, acting here, and this is not... this pitch. Like, what do you... How do you do that when you've got someone who is already coming from a pretty tough spot to succeed in? Well, I mean, part of that is not me saying, I'm not here to tell that you, whether you can do it or not. Mm. In that case, I'm just saying... I'm going to put this thing together. We're going to give it our, our best try. Mm. I'm going to do my best to, to, to direct you. Yeah. And in the end, the finished product, I'm like, there's the finished product. Now you decide whether you sound good or not. In the mm. end, you've got to, you've got to decide, not me, because I'm not casting anything. Mm -hmm. I'm not actually hiring anybody. I'm just letting sure. you see, like, it, if you say you want to give it a try, mm. then give it a try. And let's see what happens. Yeah, you know, but now it's mm -hmm. not like I went to those two people. You guys are fantastic. The rest of you, fuck off. <laughs> really, what are you doing? It's just uh -huh. me going. In the end, I mean, the, is the there a moment there. where the two of you are listening or talking about the the that the final output? Like, is there a point where you're going over at the actual thing, or do you just say, "There's your file. Have fun with your life." No, because I do two day. I I had it uh, as a two day panel. Uh, uh, so the first day is looking at a strip, how to break down a character and decide what it is that you're going to do with it. Mm -hmm. And so I would do that in that, like in an hour, we only had an hour to do it. And then, then, and then I would say, all right, now you, I want you to look at this. Yeah. Then tomorrow, same time tomorrow, come back and we're going to dub this thing. And it's not, you know, it's maybe 45 seconds or a minute. It's yeah. not like a long thing, but it's a, th it's a, it's a, it's a trial by fire. Yeah, was, let's okay. like let's do it, and yeah. then in the end, uh, I'll edit it together and I'll put it up. I'll put it up somewhere. Do you, ha so you, do you have a, Do you have any moment where you like rank or compare them at Absolutely all? Absolutely not. What? No. All right, Brian but that's and Justin. Not what it's about? Brian and Justin have joined us here. Hello, yes. fella, hello, hello, fellas. Brett is telling us about a a voiceover a panel. Works panel that he that he did. Yeah, uh, where he would take people who thought that they would be good at voice acting. Oh no! 
and would put him through a litany of like, hey, we're gonna record a thing, we're gonna double thing. A little boot camp. A little, a little bit. bit. A little bit of boot camp. But it's it's they, these are at conventions. These are yes. fun panels that yes. yeah. So the one rule is you must not actually take it seriously. Because then that will activate the subroutine in your mind that is a professional, and you will ruin their day. Absolutely. I'm not going to do the thing of you can't. There's no way you'll ever do this. You are the most talentless voice actor <laughs> yeah. I've ever heard. I, I'm not going to Simon Cowell it. I'm yeah. just, oh, oh, because to me, in the end, I'm going to work with whatever I've got. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to put it oh, out yeah, there. Because you, you, you would do a fun thing at the end, right? Yeah. Like, and yeah. they, they would all do a script. And... Like, we did a thing. I did a thing where I took uh, Glen Gary, Glenn Ross. Yes. The play. And I made it to where it was My Little Pony. Okay. So I mixed My Little Pony with Glen Gary, Glenn Ross. So all the cursing is done in equine in, cursing. In pony oh, and see, all I, pony I, I would do it the other way, where it's, where it's like, you bunch of horse fuckers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I mean, I wanted to do something. It was just, that was just yeah. to see if I could do it. Right. And so I, I ended up doing like, it was probably about a four minute thing. That to where and I had enough characters to come in and do the thing, and uh, and so they record and like I said, of the eight people, I think it was eight people in that one. Mm. Two people were good. Yeah, the, the other six they were just they they were coming up with, I can do this. I'm like, okay, then do it. But 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 you, you, look. <laughs> You got to have one part of this process. If you do this again, you have to have a part of this process where you are Simon Cowell okay. for a moment. So uh, no, uh, you I, either I just sounds, bring like, <laughs> sounds like somebody's asking for a job. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm someone, just saying, someone's I'm just saying, diagnosing a problem. <laughs> he's the I'm solution. Just, I'm just seeing a, a, a disembodied voice of Bryce saying, person I'm touching on the shoulder now, only the person I'm touching on the shoulder now. <laughs> <laughs> You're not very good. Please sit down. <laughs> that's something. Yes. That's something. Yeah. I don't know. I think that you, because I think that can be helpful. I think it can be constructive to get your entire shit just bodied in front of like 100 other people. Yeah. Really? Maybe I. Not oh, perfectly. Do you think that that would be helpful for you? I think if if the idea is you're taking people who say they think they could be voice actors, yeah. and you give them an earnest shot, and and then you sit, think that kind of self confidence is so robust at an anime convention <laughs> that people are they know exactly what they're asking for. This is and not also, a fun time. A, they're a legitimately process. looking for that level so of so fun to watch that people who paid money to come be at this event will yes. cheer for you what, as you, but it, as you crush them. It, if you can be concrete about it, hey, you know what? You're a little pitchy. You need to think a little more melodic. Sure. You know? Pitchy. You're a little pitchy. Yeah. Oh, you got a little too much fry. Can I get a little yeah, less fry? Yeah, a little less fry. Hey, think you know? more of this line. Well, of course, I would do that. But there's oh, well, not a oh, point okay. where I... Okay. Yeah, well, but that's what not, I'm talking about. I'm going... Because what I would have them do is like, tell me about your character. Well, can I, can I actually ask you this? Uh, Brent, because what I have known, especially with talent, is that... And I don't mean that in terms of the like like voice talent, but just right. talent in general. If you're sure. really, really good at something, there are two kinds of versions of it. There are people for whom it comes natural to them, and therefore it is harder for them to coach. Explain, yeah. It is harder for them to explain. And then there's people who are really, really good at explaining Process-oriented. Yeah, and, and the people who are really, really good at explaining it are very rarely the best. Right. Like, they are... They're good enough at it that they know how to bring the best out of other people, mm -hmm. but they're not usually the, the cream of the crop. You strike me, and I'm guessing by the way that you've already answered this question, you are the former and not the latter. Uh, I am I am the former who had to learn how to do the latter. Right. Yeah. I, 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 and and I, I say this with, with uh, nothing but admiration because this <laughs> is how I perceive myself, but uh, I, I perceive myself as a journeyman magician. I'm pretty good. Yeah. I'm pretty good, and I can point out when other people are fucking it up. Yeah. that's uh, uh, Would that be what you aim for? I, I yeah. The, uh, no, uh, he was saying the other side. Well, oh, no, no, I no, mean, no, I he, have. He was saying he's he's got I, a gift. I had natural, I've had natural talent for this, but, but, but I do also see myself as a journeyman as well. It's, so well, it's, everyone but, but, but sees you, themselves you, as you, the journeyman. You see enough of the structure that you can point to what I is can going break it down. awry. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. but but mm -hmm. he was saying he had to work for that. 
like in 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 a way that I think if I lucked into you, the first part and then I had to work for the second yes, part. Yes, like, yes, yes. I've heard a lot of Brian telling his stories of coming up, True. and they were a lot of deconstructing other people's stuff to the point where they had where like he could put together through spare parts and pieces and his own idea a transmorgification of a bunch of ideas but he can show you all the blueprints oh. of where each piece came from wow where you i have heard I don't know. I liked music. And, <laughs> yeah. and then I figured uh, uh, I could just say, like, put that sword down. Yes. And everyone would clap. Yeah. So I just kept doing it. I just, like, yeah. cool. No, I, I, I definitely kept notes. I can I could cite everything. <laughs> so I think you guys are the opposite side. I think Brian mm. could sit down and give an hour breakdown of a magician he just saw right. and say, all right, you're trying to do this. Don't do this. Dial that up. Yeah. Dial this down. And then you're and thinking then, about this. Start thinking. So about and this so other thing. says. And yeah. I once read. And you would be like, so what you do is you say, put that sword down. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's gotten further. <laughs> like, have you, ever, have you ever seen? You ever seen the uh, 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 extras? The, uh, yes, yes. Yes. With, with yes. Ian, Ian McKellen. Yes. Yeah, Ian McKellen explaining acting. You yeah. shall not pass. Ian McKellen. Ian McKellen. <laughs> He's like, and then I stop, and I'm no longer Gandalf. Yes. <laughs> what you need to understand is, I am not actually a wizard, <laughs> but I pretend to be. A wizard. But maybe but, you don't understand. But it, I read but it's the too page. Late. <laughs> I've seen everything. That's, that's Patrick Stewart. Yeah, no, I don't. Uh, so I. I, I watched a documentary the other day. Oh, yeah? uh, uh, you remember how floaty I was uh, last week? <laughs> um, okay. And uh, I still didn't sleep well that night. What did and, you watch? Uh, oh. uh, we already talked about it on the bones. But but in you my you have to pay to get the vulnerability. Go. Yep. Uh, but uh, uh, I ended up watching a documentary, and it should have been titled uh, "What It's Like to Hang Around Brian Brushwood," but unfortunately, it was titled. Star Trek: The Next Generation, Darmok. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, if you're not familiar with the episode, it is nothing but it's a not very a document. Okay, frustrated a alien uh, who only yeah. speaks in metaphors. It's, it's yes. already and like it's already a genre called documentary. Why other people <laughs> don't understand him? <laughs> it was really a, 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 a transformative experience. It's. Mm. <clears throat> Imagine MTV a boat. Music Awards. It's like a car. 1997. Go. Go. Yes, absolutely. and the road is water. <laughs> That was the whole bit I Shock had. Shock of the That's, walls fell. Uh, 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 Darmok and Gelada. And yep. the no wake signs Kimba, are the his, his miles per hour speed, speed limit. Yeah, spread yeah, wide. Yeah. 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 That's right. Ah, fuck. It sounded like a funny bit when I walked in this room. I liked it. <laughs> this show, right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just eat a lot when the milkshake duck. <laughs> There's just a lot of preamble. There's a lot of preamble, and I kept thinking, well, what's the documentary now? What the fuck is documentary? <laughs> Brushwood and Young, when the sleep was missing. <laughs> yes, when sleep was gone. I finished watching a documentary uh, the other day, uh, Telemarketers. Which episode of Star Trek? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Telemarketers on HBO. Have you seen Oh, is that out uh, now? Yeah, all three parts are out. Uh, three I, parts. All oh, the fucking docs gotta be three parts. Anyway, and go ahead. Well, how fucking, else are you gonna learn what the show's about oh, when no. the show took place? Oh, no. <laughs> what I'd say is that first part's fucking great. That first part is that is that all the '90s shit? It's all the '90s. So, shit. Explain the premise for people. Who sure. Don't know. So it's called Telemarketers. Uh, it is about uh, uh, this this guy, this these two guys who worked at a Civic Development Group, one of the early phone telemarketing. Uh, agencies. Okay. And uh, uh, this was like the place that like built up the script engine and, and routing callers through all sorts of stuff. Uh, and so in the early 90s, the Sam, one of these guys, is in the office and he's got a little camcorder and he's recording stuff and putting clips on YouTube. Um, and, and now, now he's putting it in 2004. Or yeah, I guess when when but, YouTube but was they're authentic but clips. They were the yeah, they're, yeah, yeah. And uh, and uh, did you did have any of you seen Workaholics, the uh, Comedy Central? A couple, a couple of episodes. Uh, no, I oh, not, no. Uh, so in that show, it's three stoner guys who work at a call center, and it's crazy, and anything can happen, and all sorts of wacky adventures, uh, and that's like that's how it was. Like it was just. 
convicts and addicts and underage people who would be all fine getting paid eleven dollars an hour mm-hmm. and doing what the fuck ever they wanted. And Dude, was this is two thousand four? Well, no, this would have been the early nineties. Early nineties. So, this so, so this is a found footage documentary. Yes. Of them in the '90s doing it, and, and that is, I am assuming, the first mm. that's the episode. First that's episode. probably the most interesting episode. It absolutely. And is. then <laughs> there is some in in the trailer. They mm-hmm. build it up like, but really, they were there for a grand, massive conspiracy that we're going to reveal in the third act. And what I'm guessing. My assumption from watching the thing is that uh, the most exciting part of this is watching some found first, footage, 90s yeah, shit. Yeah. And then eventually there's something, because they never spell it. It's not like, if it were awesome, the thing that they uncovered, it, they would have been, like been like $40 billion that right. were based on. Instead, it was just like them yelling at each other on a street with modern cameras. And it's like, okay, yeah. I'll bet you it's dumb. Well, I think we shouldn't have invented the worst plague of phones ever. Well, I think we should have. Yes. <laughs> well, like, how would you define, how would you make any suspense? No, they didn't defeat telemarketing. Of <laughs> course they didn't. And that's how they perfected it. And so that first episode is very much like, here's a lot of what happened in the 90s, what it was like. They talked to a lot of former people who were there. The second part is more into the 2000s where Sam and uh, Patrick, one of the guys who who also worked there, kind of re- reconnect and they are trying like, hey, let's actually like uncover this shit, man. Like that, you know, they, uh, let's try and bring them down, man. <laughs> hey, remember when we m- murdered that person? We should head up the investigation of how that person <laughs> got murdered. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and then and you know why this is three parts is because. Like, because you get paid by the episode. Yeah, <laughs> it's the no, for real. That's how television yeah. works. Because and because fucking nothing happens. Like, guess what? The second, it's not even a spoiler. Like, at one point, it seems like they're gonna talk to someone who has influence, and then one of the guys just fucking disappears. Yeah. Uh, cut oh. to ten years later. A new sure. mystery. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and and you're like, oh my god, is it because he died mysteriously? Because you see him doing heroin. He talks about doing heroin. They call him a legend on his lower third. So maybe this is where he mysteriously dies. Yeah. Because he's not. There aren't any interviews with him. There are no talking heads with this guy. Right. He's a. T- he's so this must be when he dies. Ten years later. Interviews. He shows up. Yeah. He's back. Uh, he's he, back. He just. Uh, he's just. So he watch does, watch the first episode. Watch the first episode. It's good. Great. Great it's, shit. The yeah. trailer looked amazing. Yeah. I thought, so that's why my phone is broken. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> uh, and and then you... Because the, the second two parts are just them, like, fucking failing to actually make to anything, anything meaningful. You know, it it is worth watching if only to, like, see someone fuck up in a lot of really small ways. But obvious ways. What do you think the premise of this show is? <laughs> <laughs> how how far off do you think we are from having uh, no longer does the phone trill and somebody answers, but instead you call a number and you get a chat GPT like entity saying, "Hi, I'm Brian's agent. What is this about? Uh, let me see if he's available." That, oh, I'm sorry, he's not available right now. That's what. Like happens on my phone. I, I got one of those call screener apps, mm-hmm. and it just says like, "Who are you?" And uh, most of the robot shit just hangs up. Yeah. And most of the the human telemark- uh, telemarketers hang up. The only thing that sucks is that it also sends anybody that's not in my address book immediately to that. Uh, so oh. They either don't get through it, or there'll be a weird thing where it'll like ring, but if I hit the button, that it silences it instead instead of picking it up mm-hmm. but uh but well, and they're building that in the phones uh this year in the new ios the like uh live screening so if someone calls you you could say hey screen it and you'll see the transcription of them doing the voicemail live oh, real and time. then you can break into the voicemail oh, that so so in other words we're bringing back the uh the screening the answering machine yeah the answering machine yeah. Yeah. where it's like pick up pick up pick up this is important. Pick yeah. up. And yeah. there's like. Screen Master All 3000. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. From Tenacious Dude, you're going to yeah. have to fucking shorten your. Uh, <laughs> I will. Your, your machine. I will. Yeah. Uh, uh, the D <laughs> is not available. <laughs> All right. Five minutes. Thank you, five. Yeah, man. That's been my my uh, aggravation. My just 
that people don't Your nemesis. Well, they that people pick uh, up on that their sword. cell phones. They're not putting greeting messages. So it's just this person is not available. Of this number, beep, and I'm like, okay, well, this is a, a professional that I was supposed to be talking to mm. to reach out to, and so now I've got to just hope that it's the person. That it's them. Yeah. I, I don't know. I've had the minimal. I've had the, this is Justin. Leave, leave a, a message. message. Yeah. 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 That, that, that's, been, that's been my shit since that, like high that's a good way. That's a good way for you to get a lot of messages. Like I don't really get a lot of messages. Uh, I, I try to leave messages. And they come in two flavors. Either uh, manic or depressive. <laughs> 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 Either I begin Sometimes to. Sometimes <laughs> the jokes are true. <laughs> I I I have not sat through my own two minute no. <laughs> voicemail message in five years. All I know is that it keeps both robots and humans away. There's only, <laughs> there's only two kinds of messages that Brian Brushman leaves you. It's either wing dong diddly ding dong do, buddy. Hey, I just want to let you know that there's a lot of things that are going on, and I'm Slippity one of them. Pop. I have a story for you, and it's a story that you'll never guess in a million years. Go ahead, now, verb. And there's a twist at the end. Brian Brushwood here. We're on hour one of our new telethon. Yeah. Call my number when you want to hear or, what's going on. Or... <laughs> hey man. <Boop. laughs> hey man, we get real on this podcast. We're telling real facts. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh. So uh uh we were talking about this. Uh somebody mentioned Rick and Morty in the chat, and we were talking about this on Cord Killers. I feel like the quiet part that they're not saying loud is they're saying they're using sound alikes. That's code for AI, right? right. I mean, it's definitely Maybe, all yep. just generated. Well, it's, it gonna, is it's gonna sound indistinguishable. They will have a human who they act like is the person doing an extremely good impression but it's it's all gonna be just AI. i mean maybe but it, the, at, at the end of the day also like you don't want with that audience you don't want to announce like the new rick and morty is doug gibraltar right because then he's gonna be the most hated person on the internet right. like, and, and he's like guys i have a rock <laughs> <laughs> What was that a bad joke? What do you know. think about Doug's performance? Uh, okay. It doesn't matter what you think. <laughs> all right, that was a good punch up. That was a good. Yeah. All right, we're in the flow. I'm feeling it now. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. So uh, uh, I guess you were out of town. Uh, the uh, the Bones podcast began with so welcome to the podcast called. Is Brian okay? No, they have to pay for that. They have to, they pay, have to for pay for vulnerability. Well, we, we, we well, peacock here. You get to okay. hear the first half we hour. We peacock for yeah, free. Yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I guess you can hear it for free. You yeah, can hear yeah, half yeah. of it for free. But yeah. then it cuts I, I, off I, just as I was like, I think the problem started when, <laughs> and it fades <laughs> <means> out. <laughs> it might actually only be your segment, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. They, I, they, they won't even know what they're then missing you out can, on. Yeah, then you can, you can hear it. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> you were fucking uh, you were sleepy. Yeah. yeah. No, I was floating. You were sleepy. I, I, was I, I wished him, I, I, in my response to him, I go, I wish you are able to catch up in stages with your sleep. Uh, and, and actually, that, that is what it was. We talked about it in The Bones. Like, I, I did take your advice and I went to bed and I laid there comfortably for three hours longer, sure. wide awake. It was, it was pretty wild. Yeah. But uh, it was the best trust fall. Like, I looked around the room. And and being surrounded by people I trusted who said, "Yes, your job is to laugh." I'm like, I could do that. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, uh, well, listen to the bones. It was good. Yep. Good bones. <sighs> good bones. Good it's bones. got good bones. Good bones. Good bones. Good bones. Hey, Bryce. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> Why won't you just say goodbye to ever? <laughs> oh my God! Thank you to the green room, Jiminy. Rimini Bimini. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to the rest of the green room. Bryce Castillo here. 
Welcoming you back to the end of the green room, great room holding thing. Of course, let's check out our uh, birthday borner here in uh, on our Discord. Discord.greatnight.tv is a well. I kind of I gave that a little I gave a little twang. Uh, Discord.greatnight.tv dot TV where you can go to join our Discord server. If you let us know that you got a birthday or something coming up, let us know in our birthday borner channel, and we will. Uh, and that's and that's where we'll mention it. We'll mention you get you'll get your menchies. Oh, I gotta log in again. God, why? Why did why? No, don't make me log. Okay, maybe on browser. It's so weird. Okay, uh, and also who let it be? That's right. Who the fuck let it be September? Thank you, Scooper Never Girl, for reminding us that. Who let it be September? I, and I hope it wasn't Earth or Wind or Fire. You uh, fucking didn't have my goddamn mic open. <laughs> So I couldn't make the joke. You blocked my joke by way of technology. <laughs> I didn't know you were over there. So Do you remember? 21st of September. Is that is that what it is? The 21st of September? I was pretty sure about it. But I didn't. And you're not on mic, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, uh, so let's get into our birthdays. Uh, we got uh, two here. Uh, we've got a uh, uh, Bo uh, in OKC uh, turns 45 on Thursday. Happy birthday, Bo! Uh, plus, Bo's father turns 74 five days later. Happy birthday, Bo's father! And uh, one uh, Dr. Calhoun, congrats on that PhD, by the way. Turn uh, turns 50. Turns a big 5-0. Uh, in four days on the ninth. So happy birthday, Dr. Calhoun, and everyone who submits show, uh, uh, submits birthdays in our birthday borner section of the show. Let's talk about some fast cars really quickly. Well, we got a few minutes here before we get uh, uh, before we get set up. Uh, we had uh, we had the the Italian Grand Prix. Had the Italian Grand Prix uh, over the weekend. A uh, uh, humdinger, humdinger. Uh, of of a race, uh, uh, Max Verstappen was not on pole position. That's right. It only took he 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 needed like ten laps to destroy everybody. <laughs> um, uh, but there was great fighting. The Ferrari guys, the Ferrari guys uh, were fighting each other, and they didn't they didn't hit with each other. guns. Well, with. Car. What if Ferrari designed a gun though? People would be really into that. Oh my also, god! Also, it would like, shoot so fast. Would, would, would big biceps count as guns? I saw two people fighting. I think it was a NASCAR thing. I saw right. it. Was you saw two guys? They had a lot of muscles and they were fighting each other. And he in front of it cars. Was a NASCAR thing. Go. It, when when was this? This is your segment. It was it was, it was an hour ago, and, and go. Uh, we were we were having our Brian saw pre-show it. meeting. No more detail. Go. <laughs> uh, it looked like what? they were about to almost try to throw a punch. Boom. Oh, what? Uh, and and now Bryce. And and thank goodness they didn't, because the race stewards would have had something to say about that. Mm-hmm. That's a ten second penalty if you shoot a gun at another driver. Uh, well. Uh, Mm, uh, Maybe even twenty seconds. I, oh, oh, okay, I, I, you you do realize you're legitimately the person I trust most on knowing these things. I know, but I don't know when there are fist fights at NASCAR races. Wait, 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 when they're a metaphor. I didn't even know if it was NASCAR. I just know I saw <laughs> cars and uniforms and two guys kind of like about to fight. That's that's those are your clues. If Inspector. you were to put words in their mouth, <laughs> like like how would that fight sound? Hey, I was trying to be faster than you and there you are. I, I'm going to need two characters for this. I, I need somebody to break up the fight. Hey, now, 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 hey break it up. That's, that's pretty much what I saw like an hour Ooh-wee, ago. sucker. <laughs> and you thought I had more so information good. on that. Okay, good. fun. All right. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I guarantee you somebody in the chat's going to have a clip. It's going to be amazing. Uh, but it was a good race in uh, in Italy over the weekend. Uh, very Italy. Italy at Monza. Monza. Italy. It's actually uh, considered Ferrari's uh, home race. Did they win? They uh, f- uh, they won as best as you can this year, which is that they came in third and fourth place. 
Wait, as best but, as anyone yeah, can, or as best what, as they. What does that mean? Uh, I, I was going to go see that Gran Turismo movie, and I thought somebody won. Well, <laughs> so that, that's so. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, there's so many. <laughs> that's you're that's a that's a Bryce code injection. No, you're going to break his brain. No, break his brain. <laughs> <laughs> I just injected code that there crashed just, Bryce. Yeah, yeah, do anything, mode. Do anything, mode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's because the Red Bulls and their car. Are impossibly fast. No one, uh, Max Verstappen beat the all time, the 70 plus year record for the most consecutive uh, F1 race wins. He won the last 10 races in a row, and nobody's ever done that. And before. no one's. And no one's touching him because he's got the fastest car. And he's got the fastest car. And, and they've, never, called Tracy they've, Chapman. Never, they've never inspected him for wings. Uh, yeah. And, and I think he's doping. Mm -hmm. I think he's dope. I think he's dope. Oh, uh, I think he's. D <laughs> well, I think I he's. <laughs> There's no more letters. No to more take letters. Away. Yeah. All right. He's, uh. All right. Well, let's get it. let's start the show then. Uh, thank you, everybody. Let's go back to that. <laughs> let's go back to the. We we were at nothing, and but, you wanted to make something out of nothing. Yeah. Was, How'd that work out? Well, you know, I didn't really have anyone to bounce off of. So. No, yeah, because we all <laughs> folded. Right. You came back. All right, let's start the show. You were like trying to have a Burning Man in a pile of mud. <laughs> no, oh, look at this. 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 Look at All right, let's do our final checks here and see how everyone's doing. Uh, Justin. Yay, yay. Brian. <laughs> oh, we're going to have to. There you go. No, don't do that. Don't do the other part of it. Okay. <laughs> just, just, the first part's fine. That's, all right. Uh, Annalisa? Yes. Uh, Get in. Ready? <laughs> Brett. Hello, friend. Hello, friend. All right. Let's do the great. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. All right. Let's do the great night program. Brett, are you ready? Yes. I'll count you in. Thank you. In.